My name is Julie Turney, and this is the HR Sound Off Podcast Show, the show created for HR and business professionals to discuss pertinent topics and trends as it relates to our professions. We're going to have amazing conversations with HR professionals from all over the world, get to learn their origin stories. How did they get into this profession? What do they love about being here? And how they want to set the record straight on that one misconception that really drives them crazy about our profession. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's sound off. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the HR Sound Off podcast show. My name is Julie Turney, and I am your host. How are you doing today? It's a beautiful day outside. We're recording this on St. Patrick's Day, which is an interesting day, the luck of the Irish. And I am joined today by my guest, Jennifer Whale from The Body Shop. Jennifer, how are you doing? I'm great, Julie. Nice to be with you today. It's Love nice the to Irish to you. <laughs> It's nice to be here with you as well. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. I want to get started by just telling our audience a little bit about you. So would you mind answering the question, who is Jennifer Whale? What is your HR story and how did you get here? Absolutely. Um, My HR story began um, 20 years ago as I date myself um, I, I went to school for HR. I've loved HR for so many years and I knew this is what I wanted. I actually have a customer service background. And when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in college, HR seemed like a seamless transition from having experience with people and you know dealing with customers. And um, it truly was, I think, a, an easy transition for me. Mm. So um, like I said, I've been in HR for 20 years, started out um, with the body shop. So I have been with the same company for 20 years, which oh. I, I do think is a bit unique these days. It is. And, and, I, and I'm quite proud of been a, being able to have this journey um, you know, to share. So when I joined, I was an HR admin. I came in with no no real experience in human resources. So Mm -hmm. I started um, doing anything and everything I could, data entry, filing, doing a lot of listening Mm -hmm. and and joining meetings and really being quite the sponge to to learn more and more. And that sparked an interest in benefits. And so for years, I focused in as a benefit specialist Mm -hmm. um, administering leaves of absence, becoming really a subject matter expert in the body shop's benefit plans. And from there, I progressed into more of a senior benefit and comp specialist role. I had a team that I was able to lead at that time. Mm -hmm. And again, transitioned from that role into the HR business partner for our distribution center. And I held that role for about five years or so. And that is where I am today, now transitioned as the HR director for not only our distribution center, but our offices across North America. Wow. That's That's a mouthful, but it's over 20 years. It's a mouthful, (laughs) Jennifer, but it's an amazing story. And it really speaks and bodes well to you in terms of commitment to the organization, but commitment to your career and developing it and growing it within the organization and speaks well to the body shop as well in terms of their commitment to developing and growing their HR team. Because I find a lot of times, and maybe you can tell me if you agree, but a lot of times when HR people leave organizations, it's because there's no, they don't feel there's room to grow, develop. They don't feel like they're being stretched. Clearly that is not the case with you. I absolutely agree. And I think creating career paths and having examples within the business Mm -hmm. for other people to see is the best way to, to, to model that behavior. So we want people to feel like they can grow with us and stay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's something I'm doing now today within our HR team is trying to figure out how do we create that structure so that people can continue to grow and develop and try new things and work on projects that, that stretch them. But also you might find that you're more interested in another area yeah. and you don't know that until you've tried it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I love that. 
when we think about organizations today and building those relationships, it's something that can, it's very few and far between. So what are some of the things that you really love considering your story about working for the body shop and with the body shop? Absolutely. I think for me, having come into a company that wears its values on its sleeve, right? Everybody, if you do know the body shop, then you Mm -hmm. typically know the story of Anita. You know that we're a values-driven company. Uh, You know that we've been against animal testing. We're known for our campaigns, all of that. That's extremely important to me. I, I want and have to work for a business that's a force for good which is what we are so proud to say we are. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to go to work every day and spend so much time away from your family. You better be doing something you love, right? And and I say that to so many people, that's like my tagline is if I'm going to go to work and leave my children at home, I need to love what I'm doing and really believe in it. And I do. Absolutely. I love that. I do love the body shop. I have to say, whenever I am in the UK, this is one of the first places I go Oh, like, that's great. Yes, I like the basket, everything. So there's uh-huh. always something in the body shop that I want to pick up. and. and uh, absolutely. We really, truly do set the bar and body butter. If you haven't tried it, you must. It's it's absolutely the best product out there. That sounds like something you plan to send me. I would appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I think I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So let me ask you this. What are you reading, watching, listening to right now that you think our audience would enjoy? Oh, that's a good one. So because I have kids, I don't get to read a lot of adult books. I read a lot of kids' books. But mm. when I do, <laughs> I the did TV, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know I'll get out of that phase and I'm going to miss it. So for right <laughs> now, I'm all about, you know, Disney princesses and, and dinosaurs. But ah. uh, when I am reading um, something grown up, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what are people doing uh, as far as returning to work, the yeah. hybrid model, um, return to work fully. The mm. pandemic and COVID has really, really changed you know, the landscape. And I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but yeah. it's top of mind for us right now. And mm-hmm. so I'm very curious to read what other companies are doing, what's been successful so far, Mm -hmm. um, how are the employees feeling about it? It's just top of mind for me. And and I'm also always interested in reading more about companies who are similar to ours, other B Corps out there, Mm -hmm. and and what they're doing to continue to be disruptive, because that's what we're doing. We try to change the landscape in HR, and we're trying to be, honestly, as unique as we can be when it comes to our offerings. And so when you're around and reading what other like-minded companies are doing, I think you can get a lot of uh, inspiration. Definitely. Where, where do you pull that inspiration from? What are some of the companies that you look at? Oh gosh, well, obviously Grayson Bakery has mm-hmm. been a huge um, mentor and company that we have partnered with in particular because of our open hiring concept okay. um, that, you know, we, we learned from them. They've been doing it for 40 years. The yes. body shop implemented open hiring three years ago. Uh-huh. And it's near and dear to my heart because my location, the distribution center in North Carolina was the first place globally within the body shop to implement open hiring. Awesome. So, you know, that's a, a unique distinction. And I'm so proud that I've been able to, to lead that charge here you know, for the company. Yeah, that's amazing. Grayston's amazing. Ben and Jerry's. There's so many B Corps out there that are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And and we're proud to be in that company. What would you say is one of the things that you think really attracts talent to work at the body shop? What's the one thing out there that you would say, hands down, people will come to work at the body shop because of this? Yeah, well, you know, that's a good question. I think people come because they know our reputation. They know we're values driven. They know that we put um, as a B Corp, as you do, people and planet and profit all together mm-hmm. as the most important. And um, they stay because it's much more than that. It's it's the culture, it's the people, it's the desire to do good and all that we do good in the world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, we not only campaign, but we promote activism and we give volunteer hours to our to our team members to go out and you know use their voice and we encourage that and I don't think every company is comfortable with that and for us that's just in our DNA 
Oh, that's really good. I mean, curious to know like how that played out, especially in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, absolutely. That was, I, I, I can tell you life-changing, not only mm-hmm. for our team members, but for business as a whole. Yeah. And as we navigate that, what it has made us as HR practitioners think about is how do we be more inclusive? Mm -hmm. How do we really wrap our arms around the diversity out there and bring them in and, you know, level the playing field so that everybody has opportunities Yeah. and diversity is, is something that is top of mind, inclusion, belonging. That's why I'm, I'm so proud of the work that we're doing right now with, Mm -hmm. with the initiatives that we have in place. That's wonderful. I almost feel like if I was ever going to come back into the corporate space, I'd want to work at the body shop. That's what you've done. For oh, I would, I would make room for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, Jennifer. What advice would you give to your younger self entering the HR profession for the first time? Ooh. You know, I, I still tend to be a bit cautious and on the quiet side, I tend to realize that I'm a, I'm a thinker, a reflector. So like, I have to think about things before I speak. Mm -hmm. And I, I've grown to be a bit more of an extrovert when I need to be. I I wish I could have honed that skill a little bit earlier Uh because I think, um, you know, being confident and knowing that you have something important to say is, is critical. And the, the younger generation, the body shop is so inspired by our, our younger team members and mm-hmm. what they bring to the table and having a voice early on in their career. Yes. And, and I think that we have that focus now, if only 20 years ago, we yeah. would have, you know, put, put the young gen at the table with, with people who have been in the business for 15 years, I think yeah. it would have been really interesting. So oh. I'm just happy that we're doing it now. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 could not agree with you more on that because I think there's so much to learn from our younger generation just the way that they use their voice and the way that they learn and the way they express themselves and what they're passionate about when it comes to the earth the planet and you know wellness and inclusivity I think that it's so important that we do have our younger generations at the table so when we think about you know diversity equity and inclusion at the table do we consider the young generation? I don't think a lot of people do. So that's kudos to you. Yeah, kudos it's not you. always the obvious choice, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that you're pulling from different, um, you know, backgrounds, et cetera. But, mm-hmm. but the, the younger generation looks at things differently yep. and they expect companies to have social responsibility. They're seeking out the B Corps to spend their money on. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we didn't always think of that years ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there's a responsibility to live up to that reputation. And uh, I don't think we have a choice anymore. Yeah. to stay relevant but luckily we've always been setting the bar on that yes you have I love <laughs> it an important question for you how do you practice self-care oh you know <laughs> that is super challenging right now and in, yeah. in the state of COVID I think all of us feel a bit overwhelmed overworked work is always there at your dining room table or wherever you do work at home. It's hard to unplug. And for me, um, you know, spending time with my kids, unplugging, watching a cartoon, going outside, being away from the screen Mm -hmm. is so important. And it is how I, you know, recharge and connect with, you know, my kids, because honestly, everything that I do is, is for the family as, yeah. as it should be We're we're working, but it's, it's because of our families. Yeah. So they're my inspiration and that's how I recharge. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Self-care is the best care. It's and, true. And yeah. you know, self-love it's, it's not an easy thing. It takes a long time to really be able to look yourself in the mirror and realize that your flaws make you beautiful. And, mm-hmm. and that's why, again, the body shop is so inspiring because mm-hmm. there isn't one mold. There isn't one way to be beautiful yeah. and products and beauty products in particular, um, you know, should, should complement your own natural beauty. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. The big question, 
What is the biggest misconception about HR that really bothers you that you want to set the record straight on right here, right now? Oh, absolutely. I was waiting for this one. (laughs) My answer three years ago, I probably would have had a different answer for you. But Mm -hmm. since working with um, the open hires that have come into the distribution center and hearing stories from our our retail operations, Mm -hmm. I think the misconception out there is that you absolutely have to interview, require education, have to do background checks, drug screening, all these things before you bring a a candidate in Mm -hmm. and and give them the job. Yeah. Those are, are honestly traditional and antiquated and you're missing out on such an amazing, loyal, talented population Mm -hmm. of candidates when you exclude them from the beginning. Mm. And in our work through open hiring, we've basically done away with interview practices. We've done away with all of those background checks. We, we trust you from the beginning. And, and I truly believe, I know what a concept, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think <laughs> that people's past doesn't necessarily dictate their, their future. Or define their future. It does not. Oh, absolutely not. So second chances um, is, is one thing that I really, truly wish more companies would, would think about Mm -hmm. because, um, I, I've got stories and stories of how it's life-changing when you give someone an opportunity. Absolutely. Do you want to share one of those stories? Oh, I would love to, uh, two years ago during holiday, the body shop, uh, distribution center ramps up by about 250 people Mm -hmm. to help execute Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we had a a gentleman come in and he'd been incarcerated for 20 years Mm -hmm. and hadn't worked really as a grown, a grown adult. Yeah. And this was an opportunity for him to make money for his family Mm -hmm. and, and actually have an honest day's work. Mm -hmm. And he, he shared with me that the simple act of coming to work, punching a clock, spending eight hours doing something, punching out and going home was so rewarding because he'd never had the opportunity to do it. He was overlooked. He wanted to work and wasn't able to get a job because of his past. Yeah. And I mean, that still gives me chills because Mm. if we don't get people an opportunity, I know I have tons of those stories and (laughs) that's just one. Mm -hmm. He, He went on from our seasonal role to get his um, CDL and he's driving trucks now because he had work experience from the body shop. Uh-huh. And I mean, what, what better, you know, gift is it, you know, yeah. to, to know that you're giving somebody their livelihood and an opportunity to make an honest paycheck for their family. Oh my gosh. That, life-changing. So life-changing and such a fulfilling feeling, right? For you as an HR professional to be able to make that impact and difference in someone's life and the mm-hmm. fact that you have so many stories around that is amazing and I hope that our listeners today will really you know take that to heart when we talk about and I don't think I've ever talked about this before so maybe Jennifer you need to come back and we should have a conversation all about open hiring because I would love to it is a concept that I think a lot of people don't know about and mm-hmm. will struggle with, but it is yeah. a concept that we, and a construct that we need to seriously consider and look at moving towards. I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, honestly, being, being in HR for 20 years, it's the complete opposite of what you learn in HR 101, right? Yeah. Like the employment screenings, all these traditional practices, like that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, removing the, the interview and not requiring a high school diploma for jobs that really truly don't need a high school yeah, diploma. diploma. Like it seems or a degree. <laughs> no, not at all. And there's so many job descriptions where you you need all this education, but you're excluding so many people who don't have access to education. Exactly. And and especially at that level. Yeah. And when you really start to peel the you know the layers back, you realize you know you're putting up your own barriers. Mm-hmm. You can't fill your jobs. No. Right now. Because you've got too many hoops to jump through. So, yeah. Yes, we should continue to talk. I could go all day. Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. Wow. Thank you so much. I mean, with that being said, you have survived your time in the sound booth today. But thank you. Can you tell us where we can find you on social media? 
Absolutely. I'm on LinkedIn and, you know, would love to hear from anyone who wants to have a conversation around how open hiring has impacted the body shop and, and how they could potentially incorporate it in their own, in their own business. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us in the sound booth today. I hope that you found this information from this episode useful. You can find me on all social media platforms at I am Julie Turney. That's I A M Julie Turney. And you can find this episode or this show on most digital platforms Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, you name it, we're there. Thanks to Rock Solid Entertainment for helping me to put this content together for you. And I will see you again in the next sound off.